All right, so here's our world premiere song and our video from your very own pastor, AKA Urban D, and I'll be that. Give a round of applause. Stay standing, guys. I love you. Dirty, grimy and gritty, survival mode, self-centered and witty, I'm busy No time for committees, trying to build my empire like Diddy, but it crushed me It crumbled and stripped me, but God, he saved me and flipped me, rebuilt me and quit me He rocked me, he's with me, he gave me this mission to just love my city Come on, y'all, put your hands together We're gonna love our city, y'all give it up for DJ Eliz, female DJ in the building yeah, yeah. Come on, I'll be that. LOC, that's the motto, extra bravado. We let swerve jump out the Tahoe. Biblical truth, we got those. Live proof, we knocking them like those. The power living exhibit the fivefold. There's no limit, the limit the guy goes. The same if I got rose, the power they got holes. So to get out, touch somebody, love somebody. We his body, we embody. Yes, we body. Spirit of the most high, yeah, we got it. Oh, better yeah, he got us. So give me the mic, better yeah, keep that. We on the block where they need that. Serving out be that. Or whatever he called us to. Never not sit it, won't you follow soon? Hey, help me out. We're gonna love our city. Come on, love our city. Now say it like this, come on. We're gonna love, love our city. I'll always love my city. Come on, come on. Let me hear y'all. We're, We're gonna love, love our city. city. Y'all got it, y'all got it. We're gonna love, love our city. I'll always love Check it out, city. yo. We're gonna power, so, so we empower others, fathers and mothers and, mothers and sisters and, and brothers and haters and lovers. The haters, haters they love us, want to discover the hope that we cover, we see. There's no blindness, we love in our city with acts that I can't so should I say queso? Comes with some pesos, we'll, we'll buy your coffee, you hold your pesos. We got free groceries, we'll cut your lawn, spraying for gas that's filling with brawn. 500 T, with shirts like an army, spreading some love, you know it's this army we lit, we crush and we smashing. 2,000 hours of volunteer passion, saved by his grace, we're changing this space, suitcase city. Innovation Where I plan to spend the rest of my day. Put your hands together. I got plans to make it a better place. We're gonna make this a better place, y'all. Yeah. Y'all help us out, come on. Uh-huh. We're gonna, gonna love our city. I'll always love Let me hear y'all, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, We're gonna, gonna love our city. Yup, yup, what yep. we gonna do? Hey, hey, we're, we're gonna, gonna love, love our city. city. Come on. City. Over here, come on, y'all. We're, we're gonna, gonna love our city. Yeah, you know it. Come on, man, break, break it down, down. break it down. <laughs> Woo! We're gonna love our city. Okay, uh-huh, we're gonna love our city. I love you. Make some noise for the Lord. Yeah. Look at the person next to you, tell them love our city, give them a high five. Yeah. Well, it's great to see all you guys, man. We've had a party all day. This is service number three. Uh, at our 9 a.m. service, we had our city councilman, Louis Vieira. He was in the building, got up and shared a little bit. Uh, on the last service, we had the mayor of Tampa, Mayor Bob Buckhorn, was in the house. Uh, we got all kinds of people. Uh, uh, Pastor Chris Brooks was in the building last service. He baptized a couple of people, helped us jump in. I, I see my man Scott Free and Tammy Free from Atlanta, from City Takers. They're in the house. I think Michael Clayton is in the building somewhere. Where's he at, man? He, he was like, yo, I'm here, man, I'm here. So uh, we got Joy Green is in the house. Joy Green is actually with uh, the, the National Day of Prayer. So coming up next Thursday night, 
We're going to give you guys our flyers next week. You're going to hear more about it. But we're all going to show up at Steinbrenner Stadium at the field, joining other Christians, other churches from all over Tampa at 7 p.m. We're going to have a big prayer rally, a big party over there, a big celebration. You guys are going to hear more about it next week. We're going to show you a video. We're really going to pump it up. But if you want to get more info, she'll be hanging out afterwards. Give it up for Joy. So... The mayor, the mayor really wanted to be here this service, but he had to rush off to another appointment. But we filmed his address from the last service. So turn your eyes to the screen. We're going to check this out real quick. Give it up for the mayor one time. Pastor Tommy, thank you. I don't know how I'm supposed to follow what you just did. <laughs> and once I figure out what you were saying, I know I'm liking a whole lot more. <laughs> Pastor Tommy, you know, Belinda Womack, who has been my friend for 25 plus years, at least, she was at my wedding, I mean, she and I go back a long way, she says, she says, Bob, well, this is not your typical church, <laughs> and I was, I'm Catholic, you know, the Catholic church has been around for 2,000 years, and I was just thinking to myself what the bishop would think when the bubbles came on and the beach balls started going out. I think the bishop Tommy would have fallen out and had a heart attack right there. But I love it. I love it. Linda said, you know, come casual. So I said, okay. I got one shirt that has light starch, so maybe I'll just wear that. So it, it is so good to be here for a lot of reasons. Now, you expect the mayor to love his or her city. But you know what makes this city so special? And you saw all the pictures of this amazing place that we call home. This city that has become a destination for the best and the brightest. The city that has transformed itself over the last six years. But what makes the city is not the bricks and the mortar. It's the heart and the soul. It's people who believe in the capacity of this city to be great but also recognize that they have a moral obligation to reach out and to help those that are least able to help themselves. And what you are doing here, Crossover, and what Pastor Tommy and this staff is doing, and what you did this past week, is touching the lives of the least and the last and the lost, and recognizing that as you have been blessed, you've got an obligation to be a blessing to other people. Because I can tell you this. This city is on an amazing trajectory. This has become that place in America where the best and the brightest want to come and be. But if we're going to do that, every neighborhood has to prosper. Every neighborhood has to rise. Every neighborhood and those kids in that neighborhood, they may not look like me. They may not be the same race as I am, but they're all of our kids. And those kids that you touched, and those lives that you touched this week and that you touch every Sunday, and the difference that you're making in their lives, make sure that they have the same opportunities that my two little girls who live on Davis Island have. You're making a difference. Like Nehemiah, you're helping to rebuild the walls of this city. You understand that what goes on in this building is not as important as what you do outside the walls of this building. So I know this, I'm going to leave you. In the book of Isaiah, Jesus had gathered all the apostles around. And he said to them, whom shall I send? Who shall go for me? Crossover church, like Isaiah who stood up and said, send me, Lord. Send me. When we need something done in this city crossover, you stand up and say, send me. When there's a difference to be made in North Tampa, Crossover Church says, send me, Lord. When Tampa needs something, I say, send Pastor Tommy, and he says, send me, Lord. For those folks in the community who are struggling every day, need your help, not just to be reached and be touched, Crossover says, send me, Lord. Crossover, keep standing up and saying, send me, Lord, because I need you. And if we're going to be that great American city, I need Crossover Church to say, send me, Lord.
Yeah. This has been such an amazing, incredible week, loving our city. And so all the people that served at some point this week, I want you to stand up. I want you to stand up. I want us to show some crazy love for all these people that made Love Our City Week happen. Y'all guys killed it. You crushed it. You smashed it. You made such an impact on thousands and thousands of people. We love you guys. Thank you guys. Awesome. Awesome. Well, look at the person next to you and say, hey, neighbor. So this is our, our last week of our series called Love Our City. And we just thought it would be real fitting to call it Our Neighbor because we literally touched over 10,000 of our neighbors this past week. And Jesus, I mean, he, he's known for saying this comment that, I mean, even if you haven't grown up around church, you probably have heard it before, where Jesus said you're supposed to love your neighbor as you love what? Yourself, right? Okay. So a lot of people know that, but, but what, does that, what does that really mean? Love your neighbor as, as you love yourself. We're going to break that down for a couple of minutes today and, and talk about that. Um, and, and then right after that, though, the party's not, it's not over. It's just getting started because we're going to baptize a whole bunch of people today. We're going to celebrate. So we have baptized in the past six years over 1,100 people here at Crossover Church. So we love to baptize some people here. And we baptized a bunch of people in the 9 a.m. service, the 1030 service. So uh, there was a whole bunch of people that came and didn't even expect to get baptized, but they left wet. So God, God might do something today to some of y'all. You, you weren't even expecting it. So just, so just hold on. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. We're going to celebrate. So I got a couple verses I'm going to read from Luke chapter 10. If you guys have got a Bible or you got your Bible app, if you want to turn there, we're going to put it on the screens. And we're going to start in verse 25. There was this religious leader, and, uh, and, and he knew the law inside and out, and he stepped to Jesus, and basically, he was trying to antagonize Jesus. He was trying to start some junk with, with Jesus. Check it out. It says this in verse 25. It says, one day, an expert in religious law stood up to test Jesus. That's the key right there. He's trying to test Jesus by asking him this question. He said, teacher, what should I do? to inherit eternal life. So Jesus replied, he said, well, he said, what does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? So I, I love it because Jesus, he, he threw the question right back at him with another question, right? Jesus, that's kind of classic Jesus form. If you've ever like watched and read some of the gospels when people were always trying to come to Jesus, many times he was flipping on them and he would ask them a question. So here he does that and he asked them, well, how do you read it? So this religious leader, he answers back and he says, well, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself, right? And Jesus said, right, right, exactly. Do this and you will live. So that part of the conversation was, was okay, was good, went well, right? But here's where it gets interesting. Look at verse 29. Then the man wanted to justify his actions. Did you catch that? He wants to justify his actions, a.k.a. this guy has an ulterior motive. He has an agenda. So he wants to justify his actions. He asked Jesus, he said, and, and, and wait a minute, Jesus, just exactly who is, who's my neighbor? Who's my neighbor, Jesus? Can you, can you, can you clarify that for me for a second? So basically what he was trying to do is he wanted to choose who he could love. Because how many of y'all know there's people we can easily love, right? Because they love us. You know, we're comfortable with these people. And, but there may be some people in your life that maybe they're not as easy to love. And so that, that was this religious leader. He's like, is there some people that I can cross off of my neighbor list? Jesus, you know, because do, do I have to love everybody? Do I have to love those people over there too? Uh, 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 can, I, can I just cross them off the list? That's what Jesus was, he was confronting this dude, and this dude was thinking this. He was saying this. Why? Because this guy, really, he just wanted to love people that looked like him, that dressed like him, that lived in his neighborhood, that were in his economic bracket, that were from his tribe. So basically, this guy, he was looking for a loophole. Somebody say loophole. loophole. He's looking for a loophole. Unfortunately, you know what? 
there's a lot of people that still operate like this, isn't there? There's a lot of people that even will call themselves Christians, they operate like that, unfortunately. Unfortunately, there's even a lot of churches that will operate like that. Even if they don't mean to intentionally do it, that's really the way that they do things. It pushes everybody out except the people that are just like them. Well, here at Crossover Church, when we look at that word in the Bible that Jesus says, when it says neighbor, biblically the way that we look at that and, and we, we say, man, that means literally your neighbor. The people you live around, the people you work around, the people you go to school around, the people that you shop around, a.k.a. your city. All those people that you touch this week, they're your neighbors, every single one of them. And, and I don't know if you've been around Tampa before, but Tampa is not just one skin color. It's not just one ethnic group. It's not just one tribe. Tampa is a multi-ethnic, multi-generational, multi-class, multicultural. It's a very rich, diverse place. And so, Crossover Church, if you could look around today, um, it's obvious what our answer to that question is when it says, who is your neighbor? Our neighbor is everybody. Look around. Isn't this beautiful today? Yeah. Give it up for yourselves. When we decided to do this Love Our City Week, we got together with a whole diverse team of people, and we, we got a big whiteboard out, and we said, we want to do all these projects. And at first it was going to be 50, and then it became 60. And then it became over 70, right? I'm like, all right, slow down, slow down. Next year we'll do over 100, but we got to like scale it up. You know, you don't want to kill ourselves, right? We want to, you know, we don't want to leave Love Our City Week like, oh my goodness, we ever have to do that again. We want to be like, man, that was amazing. We want to do that again and make it bigger next year. So next year we're going to do it again. How many of y'all excited about that? It's going to be even bigger next year, right? But so we made this list of all these different projects that we wanted to do, and we were super intentional. We said, you know what? We want to reach college students, and we want to reach homeless people. We want to reach business people that work around here, and we want to reach people that are in poverty, and we want to reach middle-class people, and we want to reach people over at Wawa that really could use a gallon of gas because they're scraping for change. And at the same time, we want to go over to Starbucks and buy somebody's bougie coffee. They could afford to buy it themselves, but we're still going to just bless them and buy it and show them the love of Jesus and let them know that somebody cares. So all of our neighbors across the board this past week, we were intentional to love all of them, to brighten their day, the people that work, live, play, uh, and hang out in this neighborhood, in this part of the city. They're our neighbors. We wanted to love on them this week, and man, you guys did an amazing job at it. I was on like at least one or two projects every day, and you guys were killing it. I was, I was learning from you guys, and the interaction we had with so many people was so amazing. So, so back to the story. So, so what did Jesus say to this guy that's looking for a loophole? Okay, remember the, the loophole guy. Jesus replied with this story. And Jesus basically was like, okay, there's these three guys. There's a priest, there's a religious guy, and, and there's a, you know, right? It sounds like the beginning of a joke, right? <laughs> it wasn't a joke. It wasn't a joke at all. Jesus begins to tell this story starting in verse 10, and he says this. He says, he says hey, a Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, they beat him up, they left him half dead beside the road. And, and by chance, a priest came along. But when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed by. What? Really? The priest, like, passed him by and ignored him? If, if we would have thought anybody would have helped him, it would have been the priest, right? Well, let, let's think about this situation for a minute. I don't know, you know, maybe the priest was in a hurry. I mean, it was a 17-mile journey between Jerusalem and Jericho. Maybe he was in a rush. There, there was a meeting he had to get to. Maybe he had to go preach at another church. So I don't know, you know. I, I, I mean, maybe it was almost about to get dark, and so he was nervous. He didn't want to be out there on the road by himself, and, and this road was known to have a lot of bandits and robbers on it. So, you know, maybe he looked at that guy and he said, you know what? Man, I'm, I'm really sorry, but man, if I stop and help him, these guys might be still like around the corner. They might come and jump me too. Or he might have been thinking, you know, this guy is, is laying here and he looks hurt, but maybe it's just a trap. Maybe if I stop and try to help him, maybe then he's part of this crew of bandits and they're going to jump out and beat me up, take all my stuff. I don't know. 
We don't know exactly what the case was, but whatever it was, he just, he kept walking. The priest kept him moving. So Jesus continued the story and he said, a temple assistant walked over and looked at him lying there, but he also passed on the other side of the road. So the second guy kind of maybe took it a little bit of a step further and he at least walked over to him, checked on him. Oh man, hey, I'm really sorry, bro. I'm gonna pray for you. Pray that someone will send, you know, you're gonna be okay, see ya. So he kept going too. These two religious guys that you would think would be the help, they would be 911, and nah, they both kept going. But now here's where it really gets interesting. The third guy rolls up in verse 33, and it says, Then a despised Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he had what on him? Compassion. Compassion. Now, now hold on a second. If, if you didn't notice something funny there, it says, what, what kind of Samaritan was he? Despised. But wait a minute, even if you haven't grown up around church before, maybe you've heard the story of the Samaritan. It kind of goes around quite a bit. And as far as I remember, it wasn't the story of the despised Samaritan. It was the story of the help me out. What Samaritan? The good Samaritan, right? So why did it say despised here? Huh. Well, see, if you don't know the historical context here, then you can really miss the punchline that Jesus was trying to give here. And we love to kind of unpack the historical context here because it makes it so rich and vivid and, and you can kind of see all the different layers because there was a lot happening here. How many of y'all were here last week, last Sunday? Uh, last Sunday we unpacked Luke chapter 7. If you weren't here and you missed it, go back and watch it on our website, On Demand, or you can go on our YouTube channel, Crossover 813. And we basically set up the scene and... Luke 7 kind of came to life with all these characters and then they froze like the mannequin challenge and I was walking in between them and describing what was happening, unpacking the historical context. So with this passage right here, there's historical context that if you don't understand that, you're going to miss some of the big punchline. So here's Jesus highlighting the Samaritan as the good guy, but in his Jewish culture, Samaritans were considered the bad guys. They never got praise. They never got shine. Nobody ever talked good about them. There was no such thing as a good Samaritan. And you had these two religious dudes come up and they just kept going. But the bad Samaritan came up and he has compassion. Now, the, hurt, the man that was hurt was Jewish. He was from a different ethnic group. Because Samaritans were half Jewish, but then they were mixed with a bunch of other things. And because they weren't full Jewish... They were despised by other Jews, and they were kind of considered outsiders. They were misfits. They were pushed to the side because they weren't 100%. So they, they were considered half-breeds. Just curious. We got any half-breeds in the building? People that are mixed with a whole bunch of different stuff, right? I am too. I'm a, I, you know, people are like, what are you? It's a secret. Just guess. <laughs> you know? So a lot of times you ever feel like, where, where do I fit in at, you know? That, that's how these Samaritans felt. And so along comes this Samaritan, and here's this Jew that's hurt there that thinks he's better than the Samaritan. But guess what? This Samaritan looks at him and says, you know what? This is still my neighbor. This is a human being. This is someone that's made in the image of God. This is someone that, this, they, they have the imago Dei, and, and I can't just walk by and ignore. I've got I've to help this person. I just can't go on with my day and act like this didn't happen. I gotta help them. So, so here's this Samaritan that steps out and helps this person that if this person was well, probably wouldn't even speak to him, probably would ignore him, probably would discriminate against him, but still this Samaritan steps up and says, you know what, this is still my neighbor. This is still a human and, and I'm gonna help them. Wow, this Samaritan was actually the hero of the story. So watch what happens next. The Samaritan goes over to him soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he took the man on his own donkey, took him to an inn where he took care of him. The next day he handed the innkeeper two silver coins telling him, take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you the next time I'm here. I'll pay you. I don't even know this man. He's Jewish, I'm Samaritan, but I'll pay you back. I'll take care of his bill. Wow. Then Jesus asked this religious leader, 
He said, now which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man that was attacked by bandits? This religious leader, I'm sure he was kind of maybe a little uncomfortable by that time. Well, I guess it was the one that showed mercy, Jesus. And Jesus said, exactly. Now you go and do the same thing. Wow. I love how Jesus like just puts us back down. Right? Puts it down. He gives an example of someone being a neighbor and says, go do the same. There's no loophole. Like you can't get out of this. Everybody around you that God puts in your path is your neighbor. And if you have the ability to help them in some way, shape, or form, then that's what we're supposed to do. See, here's the thing, y'all. We didn't help all these people this week because we're trying to earn the love of God. We already have that. Many of us here that, that serve, we already have the love of God. And, and he, because he loved us first, he changed us. He loved us even when we were in the middle of our dirt and our junk and our drama. Then, you know what, for us, man, it's an honor. It's a privilege that we have this opportunity to serve other people and pour back into them. How many of y'all feel that way? Make some noise. It's an honor. It's a privilege. So, so here's our application. Somebody say application. We never leave you at crossover without giving you an application step. And here it is today. You know what it is? Real simple. We can all be better neighbors. Look at the person next to you and say, you could be a better neighbor. Now, don't get all stuck up and think you all that. Now, look at the person on the other side and say, and I can be a better neighbor too. Yeah. See, we can point other people out real quick, can't we? Yeah, you really need to be a better neighbor. And I need to be a better neighbor too. We all can be better neighbors, y'all. We can be better at it. There's many times when we've been so tunnel vision, we've ignored needs and people and, and things happening around us. And here's the thing, y'all. Love Our City Week was amazing. It was great. We're going to continue to celebrate it. I'm sure the fruit and the impact is going to be seen for many weeks and months to come. More and more people are going to trickle in here, and people you're going to meet people. Oh, man. Oh, you got one of those shirts? Oh, they're going to drive by and see the banners on the building. Oh, that was the place that, you know, paid for my gas. I gotta, I, I've been meaning to go there, man. I need to. It's going to be a trickle effect. You know what? But even though the week is officially over, listen, it's not just a week. It's not just a project. It's not just an event. As believers in Christ, if you have a relationship with Jesus, you're here today, we're supposed to be loving our city all day, every day. All day, every day, 24-7, 365. And, and, and we wanted to spark that fire in many of you. Many of you get it already. You serve all the time. We have about 250 to 300 regular activators. We call them activators here. When you start serving, when you start loving other people, the Holy Spirit begins to activate something inside of you. We got a whole bunch of people here that activate regularly. But we wanted to get some other people in on it too for you to experience and, and taste what it's like to activate. So, so now my question is to you is who does Jesus want you to love now? Who does he want you to love today? Who does he want you to love tomorrow? The person at your job person at school, your, your neighbor, that, that person that's difficult, that, you know, some of you served this week and it was amazing and man, God did some, maybe God's going to call you to go back and do the same thing. And it, Crossover doesn't have to put the project together. You can go visit somebody, you can go bring somebody some free bottled waters, you can pay it forward, you can go to the laundromat and pay for someone's, you can do all those things on your, on your own. And we're going to do it again, but we can do that in our regular everyday lives and find ways to love on people. We just wanted to kind of jump started for you guys. And again, why do we do this? Because Jesus did it first for us. He showed us his love, even when we didn't deserve it. So many of us in here have had this experience with God. He's changed us. He's transformed us. He's done all this stuff inside of us. And so there's some of you that are here today. You're here for the first time. There was a whole bunch of people here for the first time in the first two services because somebody touched them this week. And they got an invite card. And so they're like, man, I want to go check that place out. I got to experience, like, I, I, I need some of what they have. Guess what? You can get some today. It's available for everybody that's here. Doesn't matter what your age is. Doesn't matter what your background is. Doesn't matter what your criminal record is or isn't. Doesn't matter what your bank account looks like, how many sins you have. Doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are, how many regrets you have, how many drugs you took, how many drugs you didn't take. Like, none of that matters Jesus is here with open arms today, saying, I love you. I got a plan for you. I got so much more for you. I got greater for you. 
I know some of you might be like, well, Pastor Tommy, I got to work on some things, you know, because I'm still doing this and I'm struggling with this. And, you know, uh, man, but soon I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a commitment to God. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a commitment to do this church thing. It's not about a church thing. It's not about cleaning yourself up. God is here today saying, come just as you are. With your dirt, with your drama, with your junk, I'll help you clean it up. It's not something you can do yourself and then you're going to finally get yourself ready and then come to God. No, God says, come to me just as you are. I'll fix the rest. And his love is available for you. All this love that we've been pouring out all week is because of what God has done in our hearts. And we're going to continue to do it. But that love's available for you right here, right now. I want to pray for you. You guys would, would bow your heads uh, around the room. And this thing... This love that we're talking about, this good news, and the good news is this, that all of us have messed up. Yeah, Pastor Tommy's messed up a whole bunch in the past. Every single person that is, is around you, we've all messed up a whole bunch. And we can't fix it. We can't make it better. We try. We try to quit doing certain habits and certain things. But it's only when we submit our life to Jesus and we say yes to him. That's when real change happens, real transformation can take place. I'm standing up here today as a witness of that. I've experienced it. So many other people that have a Love Our City shirt on, they've experienced it. That's why they gave back and poured back and served this week. Because they got this passion, this love that's overflowing. And so you might be here today and you're like, man, I need some of that. Maybe you've never had a relationship with, with God before. And it's real simple. We've all messed up. We've made mistakes. We can't fix it. And God said, you know what? I'm going to send my son. He's going to be the one that's going to be able to fix it. And God's son, Jesus Christ, he came down to this earth. And he showed us how to, to love. We just read this story from Luke chapter 10. We, we read a story last week from Luke chapter 7. We see all these examples that Jesus gave us on how to love people our neighbor, the outsiders, people that might even be different than us. But then Jesus gave the ultimate sacrifice of love when he gave his life. He died on the cross for you and for me and for our mistakes and our sins, our drama, our issues. And then he rose again three days later. We celebrated that last weekend with Resurrection Sunday with Easter. And so because of that, we can be forgiven. We can have new life. That's the good news. How do we earn it? We can't. Jesus already did it for us, even though we don't deserve it. We just have to say yes. We just have to commit and follow. And so if you're here today and you're like, you know what, I, I want to say yes to Jesus. I want to experience that love. I need a relationship with God. I, I, need, I need him to show me some direction for my life. If that's you today, you could do that right here, right now. I'm going to pray for you in a moment. Or maybe you're here today and maybe... Maybe once you were following God and you were close to him, but you kind of slipped away. The fire faded out and some things might have happened in your life, but God has you here today and he's tugging on your heart and he's saying, come home, come back home. Right here, right now, you can come back home. So if that's you, if you need to come back home today and rebuild that relationship with Jesus or if you need to start it for the very first time, um, I wanna pray for you. I'm right up here as you're sitting in your seat. So if that's you, as everybody's heads are bowed and eyes are closed, if that's you, if you could just put your hand up and let me know and say, that's me. I need to get right with God. Thank you. Beautiful. Put your hand up for a minute. Man, I see hands up all over this room. Beautiful. If you're watching online, God sees you. I see you all the way in the back. Beautiful. I want to invite you guys to say this prayer with me. And before we pray together, I just want to say three things about this commitment you're about to make. And you're saying yes to Jesus, but it's not just a prayer, and then you go back to your regular operation of doing things. I encourage you, like, this is a relationship you're starting or restarting. Start talking to God every day, communicating with him. It's called prayer. <laughs> just a conversation like I'm having with you right now. You don't have to use certain words. Just be real with God. He understands real language. <laughs> if you don't have a Bible, we can get you a Bible. Start reading the Word every day. That's the second thing. If you have a smartphone, you can download the YouVersion app as well. You can have it right there on your phone. I read the Scripture almost every day from my phone. I do a devotional on there almost every day. 
And the third thing is get plugged in around some other people that are heading in the same direction. You need a community of people around you, a.k.a. a church. If you feel comfortable and being involved here, you can jump in. Jump in and be a part of it. We'd love to have you be part of our family. But if you're here today and you're saying, that's me, I'm going to do those things, I'm all in. I'm saying, yes, I'm committing. I need to take these steps. I want to invite you to pray this with me then. Just repeat this. Say, dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your son, Jesus. I believe that he came to the earth. He died on the cross for my mistakes, my sins. I believe that he rose again three days later. And because of that, I can be forgiven. I can have new life. And so that's what I ask for today. Forgive me. I admit I've messed up. I was trying to do it my own way. But today, April 23rd, 2017, I'm making a commitment. I want to do it your way. I want to follow you. So God, give me strength. Show me my next steps. Give me the courage to take them. Show me your love and help me to show it to other people. Thank you for bringing me here today and for loving me, giving me another chance. In Jesus' name. Everyone said, amen. Amen. Give God some praise today. Man, that's something to celebrate right there. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Listen, we're going to, I'm going to give you some instructions in just a minute, and we're going to baptize some people. Uh, it's going to be amazing. The party's really going to start now in just a second. But before we do that, uh, I have a couple people that I asked to share a little bit of their story about baptism. And so if you guys would turn your eyes to the screen this first guy, uh, you may recognize him even if you weren't here last year when he got baptized, but I'm sure some of you guys remember him from back in the day, and he just wants to share his heart, so check this out. Hey, what's good? Can you believe that it's been an entire year? About this year, I was fellowshipping with you guys at Crossover church and it was phenomenal it was amazing for more ways and more ways than one not only did i get a chance to hang out with my good friend consigliere my uh, bishop the reverend the doctor someone's son a couple of great girls dads an excellent husband but our, our dude our reverend urban d but um i did my adult decision to get baptized and i think some of you might be wrestling with that decision right now. I'm Christopher Martin, more commonly known as Play, from the rap and acting duo Kid and Play. I've been promoted now onto executive producer and getting some great things done, but I wouldn't be able to without my agent, my manager, my lawyer, and my accountant, my Lord and Savior Jesus, the living Christ. And he's calling, he's probably tugging at some of y'all's hearts as we speak. And I'm here to tell you, along with many others there, my great servants there at at Cross uh, Over Church that um, it's gonna be the best decision, the best investment you can make in your life, real talk. Um, the joy through times where most people will see peril and especially in this world in these times of uncertainty, it seems to be uncertainty. When you have, inter when you have eternal life, you're good. But come on over to the right team, come on over to the right side of history and in life to give your soul to give your life not only for yourselves but your family too for all the people that you influence and there are some watching from afar we take this time to do something really really important something really really priceless something that i was able and through the grace and mercy of our lord and savior jesus christ i was able to do they're probably showing pictures and maybe video of it now that's just how incredible their media ministry is show-offs but anyway uh, God bless you all greatly, and congratulations for making a very, 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 very good decision. I'm out. On to Alaska.
Good morning, Crossover family. Hi, how are you? I just wanted to come to you today just to say that I'm so thankful for my Crossover family, especially to Pastor Christopher and Pastor Tommy for the impact that they've made in my life. Generally, I've been a happy person. I had a great life. I had a wonderful mother. I did have some emotional disturbances due to my father that caused me to have low self-esteem, depression, and just not a genuine love for myself. I, there was a time in my life where I didn't want to live and I just didn't want to be here. My mother came to me and said, you know, if you take your life, you won't go to heaven. At that point, I knew that I had to stay and make a change in my life. God came to me years later and said, go to crossover, and I did. I've been here now three years, one month, one year ago, today, I celebrated my baptism. I hope that if you're sitting out there and you are thinking about getting baptized, that you make that step. It's the best thing I've ever made in my life. The friends that I left out in the streets have been replaced here by more friends and family. I'm so happy. I'm so glad to see all of you. And welcome to Crossover. Love your city this week. story um I had gotten hurt at work and I lost my house and when I was so upset I was in a dark place um you know my wife was like oh you got to keep faith you got to have faith and you know I was so angry I told her faith don't pay the bills um ask me that now and I'll tell you yes faith does pay the bills uh, we've been coming to Crossover since last year, and um, I've been trying to find a church that will lead my family correctly, that will follow God. And since we've been coming to Crossover, this church has been an absolute blessing on our family. We've all been baptized, and we've all been saved, thank God. And I just thank God for bringing us to Crossover. They've been a big inspiration in our lives. We've been learning and growing spiritually, and we just love it here. with Jesus and you've never been baptized before in water, guess what? That's your next step. Today is your day. A lot of you just prayed that prayer a minute ago, dozens of you. It's your moment right now. So I'm going to give you some instructions in a second, but I, I, I know that some of you might be like, well, you know what? Well, Pastor Tommy, I, I, I want to get baptized and maybe I'll do it next time because I, I have to stop doing this or I have to work on this habit or, or I still do this. Well, maybe next time I'll be ready to get baptized. Listen, if you have said yes to Jesus, it doesn't matter about all the stuff in your life. Getting baptized in water does not mean you have it all together. Biblically, what it means is that you've made a decision to follow Jesus. If you look in the Bible, the day that people believed they were baptized, it goes together many times. We don't always have a baptism every single Sunday. Uh, so maybe you prayed the prayer last week or a few weeks ago. Today is your day. You know, there's nowhere in the scripture I see, well, you got to go through 17 classes first and we have to think about if you're really ready or not. Not this and anybody that does all that. But we look at the Bible here and you look in Acts and 
so many other places in the New Testament, the day they believed, they were baptized. Right there. They're making a pro public proclamation of saying, I'm serving Jesus. Listen, the discipleship comes after that. And we're going to be there to help you take your next steps and help you grow. Our 3D growth track, it comes up in two weeks. We're starting to back up the beginning of, of May. You could jump into that. We want to help you take your next steps and grow spiritually. But your step right now today is to get baptized in water. Now let me say this. Baptism is not the thing that saves you. Jesus is who saves you. He's the one who died for you. So going underwater, that, that's not what saves you. Oh, I'm not going to heaven if I don't get baptized. No, that, that's not the case. But baptism is a public display outwardly of what God has done on the inside. And it represents when you go under that water, you're dying to your old self. When you come out of that water, it's like you're resurrected into your new life that Jesus gave you. So it's a beautiful picture. And we want to celebrate with you. So last thing I say is this. Some of you are like, well, you know, I got baptized when I was a kid. Should I get baptized again? Or, you know, here at Crossover, we dedicate babies. We don't baptize babies in water because we don't see that in the Bible. We, we say a prayer over them. We see that in the Old Testament and the New Testament. We pray for them and dedicate them. And then when they come to age, when a child is old enough or a young adult or an adult is old enough to understand what a relationship with Jesus is, then they get baptized in water. So maybe you got baptized when you were a kid or a baby, you didn't even understand it, but you've never been baptized as an adult. That's what Play talked about. I've known Play for almost 20 years, and he admitted to me, you know what, I've never actually done this as an adult. I did it when I was a kid, but then I was, you know, I was out there doing crazy movies and all kinds of stuff. But, you know, now I've been following Jesus, and, and, and so he took that step. So maybe that's you. Maybe you need to take that step today. Or, or maybe today... Uh, you walked away from God for a season, but now you've come back home. You're like, well, can I get baptized again? Absolutely. It's nowhere in the Bible that says it's just one time and that's it. Like, if you come back to God and you want to publicly display that in front of your crossover family, like, hey, I'm serving God, then you're welcome to do that today as well. Now, I know a bunch of you are like, well, I'm not ready. I didn't, I didn't bring a change of clothes. That's okay. We've been doing this for a while. We did 1,100 baptisms. We're good at this. We got you. We got a free shirt for you. We got the new Empower shirt. That's our theme for this year. I was empowered at Crossover Church. That's nice, right? We got a free shirt for you. We got towels. Uh, we got a pool this time, y'all. We moving up. We got a pool. We're going big. We got a pool. Don't worry. We got chlorine in it. The water's clean for all y'all germaphobes. It's okay. It's, it's not bad. We didn't baptize that many people today. It's, it's pretty clean. It's fine. So... Here's what we're going to do, uh, uh, and I'm going to give you instructions, so hold on a second, because first service, I was trying to tell them, people just started running out to get baptized, and so it, it was fine. So here's the instructions. I'm going to count you down from three down to one. And when I get down to one, if God is tugging on your heart, and today is your day, whether you are prepared for it or not, like you just need to step out and make that decision today. You're going to step out of the aisle, come down. We got the Soul Train line over here. With, with Pastor Christopher over there and First Impressions, they're going to high-five you. You'll go out that door. They'll, they'll get your information. You'll get a shirt. You can get changed real quick. And then you'll go over to the cafe. And the rest of us, we're going to go out to the front of the parking lot. It's not going to take that long. It's just going to be another 10 minutes, and we'll party out there in just a minute. So y'all ready? Y'all ready? We're going to baptize some people here in a minute. Jesus is going to have the victory. So I'm going to come right over here at the beginning of the line, and, and, and I'm going to count y'all down, all right? So when I get down to zero, y'all just make your way out of the aisle. We're going to high-five you. You're going to come and celebrate. So y'all ready? Three, this could be your day. God is calling you right now. Two, don't put it off. Come on, right now, today's your day. One, zero, come on down.
There's about 25 people that just walked over there. That's something to celebrate, right? Yes, Lord. But we're going to go ahead and sing one more time because there's always just seems to be like another couple people that are kind of like on the edge of their seat. They're ready to do it, but then should I? Uh, 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 uh. So we're going to give you one more chance. And when we sing this, I think there's a few more people that still got something on your heart. Don't ignore it. Come on, just do it today. Come on, let's go, Ryan. Come on, Come on let's lift it up today. Say dozen people stepped out at the 1230 service to publicly proclaim and declare they're following you. God, we're about to celebrate with them in just a moment. Father, we thank you for how you moved in this house today, in this place. We thank you for what you did this week, God. <laughs> there goes another one. Woo! God, we thank you for the thousands of people that were touched this week, the seeds that were planted and deposited. We pray that they'll grow. We pray that you just help us to continue to love our city each and every day, God, and be a light for you in all the different places as, as we're a diverse church and there's people that are going to leave this campus today and go all over to other parts of the city, God, and be in all kinds of tribes and groups and areas, God, and we can infiltrate that with your love. God, so use us, use us in Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen. All right, hold on real quick. Freeze right where you're at. Freeze right where you're at. Let me give you two quick things. One is, how many of y'all got kids? So you're going to go get your kids in just a moment. I encourage you, get your kids and bring them out to the tank. Let them see what's going on. Um, it's only going to take about 10 minutes for us to baptize everybody. Uh, we got a big pool. We got multiple people we'll be baptizing at the same time. It's going to be a party. Listen, we got food trucks out there. We got... Uh, T uh, tables under the tent. You want to get some food, hang out, eat lunch right here. Uh, keep the party going. It's going to be awesome. Somebody say Wednesday night. This Wednesday night, we're starting a brand new Bible study series. Uh, and basically, how many of y'all have ever been offended before by somebody and it really like bothered you? We're going to talk about that this Wednesday night. Uh, there's a new Christian book that we're going to be going through. And Satan, many times, the enemy uses that to really mess us up and get us off track. So maybe you've even been wrestling with some of that or you want to make sure you're good for when that pops up again because it will. People always try to try you, don't they? Uh, so be here Wednesday night at 7. We have something for teenagers in the gym, the youth service. We have something for kids in the kids' wing. Uh, and next Sunday, somebody say next Sunday. next Sunday. We start our brand new series called The Next Challenge. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be tying in some of the social media challenges with the other stuff. And married people, any married people in the building? Married people, we have our marriage uh, retreat this weekend, our, our marriage workshops that are going on Friday night and Saturday. It's absolutely free, so we invite you guys to come out. Give the person next to you a high five. We'll see you out at the tank. Head out to the pool. We'll be out there in a minute. Yes, sir. Boy, I told him we cold. Black as hell, but we good. Till it's over, we bow. <laughs> I know we misunderstood. I know they pressing me. They want me sweating. They leave me, but we never could. <laughs> so when that weather be heating up, bitches just see us up under the hood. I, I, ice cold, watch your step. I'm about to watch my breath. So cold, ain't got no threat. Stand firm, on folded across my chest. So cold, won't suck. When the time, on schedule. Wait, no, got our own level. So cold, need a cold metal. Leveled up the back.